The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tanya, and I'm the marketing manager over here at Strucksoft Solutions, which is now part of the Great Tech Group. Um, just for those of you who are new with us today, our MWF, which stands for Metalwood Framer, is our flagship software that helps you automate and enhance the modeling and manufacturing of your timber and light gauge steel framing right inside the Autodesk Revit environment. Um, Everest, however, is a standalone product developed by Shrucksoft to help you engineer light gauge steel trusses outside the Revit and MWF environment. So with that said, joining us is our application specialist, Paranaz, who will be showing us how to design and analyze trusses within Everest after exporting them from MWF. Just uh, a couple of housekeeping items before we start the presentation. Um, please feel free to ask questions that you may have during the presentation. You can do so by typing them into the questions tab of the webinar dashboard. Um, if you'd prefer, you can also, uh, also ask questions um, by raising your hand. Uh, you can also find that feature in the uh, dashboard. All right, uh, that's it for me. I'm going to uh, hand it over to Paranaz. Thank you, Tanya. So, hello, everyone. Um, in today's webinar, we are going to see how we can generate these simple trusses for roofs or floors, how we can engineer them in MWF, and how we can export them from MWF and open them in Everest. So, as you can see here on the left, I have a basic roof and I've tried generating these joist trusses in our floor module. So as you can see, just like any other floor module, we have the datum in the center. And if we zoom in more, we can see also the panel label. At this point, if we want to edit any of these joist, uh, trust joists, we can just select them and we can switch to properties in our floor module. This is one way of editing these trusses. Uh, when we come here to member prior, uh, properties, we have a tab for joist and one for end joist. If I double click on joist, you will see that we have the same set of settings as we have also in our uh, truss module. On the top, we can change the truss depth and on the left side, we can change the spacing and first offset. These are the only differences that we have between our truss module and our floor module. But at any point, we can just cancel here. And if we want to edit this floor truss, we can just switch to our truss module and we can click on properties. It will be the same set of settings. And here we have this option to open this in our truss designer. We need to make sure at this point that we are adding the supports because when we are creating these floor trusses, in our floor module, we don't have this option to select the supports. That is why we need to add them manually here. And for adding them, we just need to select the node. So I'm just going to, uh, to click inside node one, can double click inside, and then we will get to the node options dialog box. We can check off the option for supports. One support is rolled. The width is set to six inches and it's going to be aligned to the center. So we can click on OK and it will show up in the model. And the other one is going to be fixed. So we can come here or pinned. We can check off the option for pinned and OK. Now at this point, we can come here to the top and we can export this truss. If not, if we want to open this in the Everest, we can export it. But if not, we can just switch to our settings and we can uh, set the presets here. In the general tab, we can set the trust type. If we are running the engineering, we need to check off the option for engineering. We can set the webbing settings. We can set the member sizes. If we want, we can switch between our we must have SSMA T trust catalog, we must have SSMA S trust, or we must have SSMA cap trust families. If there is a specific family that you are looking for, but you cannot find it here, you can always cancel here and you can go back to insert 
node family. The last item that we have on the left ribbon is for MWF Pro Suite. When we get to this point, we just need to click on Opt twice, and then we will have the MWF trusses. Here we have families and then profiles for metric. We will find all the available catalogs that we have for trusses in MWF. If we select them and open, we will see all the sections. We can select the sections that we are going to use. And when we click on OK, they will load in into our project. And later on, when we are in our preset settings, we will have access to those sections. So this is how we can just edit these floor joist trusses. But at the same time, what if we want to create them in our truss module? If we want to create them as single trusses with generating envelopes, we just need to select the floor or roof. We can switch to our truss module and then we can click on create. A dialog box that looks almost close to our truss profile commands will show up. We need to add the references for our supports. So we can select one support and the second one and finish. And then we need to set the settings for our support alignment. We can set the layer alignment to the entire wall and the wall alignment to near, center, or far. When we say the far side of our entire wall, we mean on this side, then center, and the near one will be the interior side of our support. You can click on OK. And then for the options, we can select to generate this envelope, align to the exterior face or interior face of the roof. We can add an additional truss at the end. We can set the spacing, so we can change them from one foot to two feet. And if we are having any sheetings on the roof and we need a small gap between the outer face of our roof and the trusses, we can just come here and add offset from outer face. We also have an option for offsets. Here we can select the start and end point for placing those trusses. We can pick the start and end point by linear or by face. When we click on OK, we will get all these envelopes for this roof. I can also isolate one of these envelopes. And as you can see, it's just a simple rectangle. Just like any other envelopes, if we want to edit them, because they are Revit model groups, we can double click, we can change the dimensions, and then when we save them, all the envelopes for this Revit, uh, all the envelopes for this roof will change. Now we can select the envelope and we can click on Create. At this point, if we have any saved presets, we can just click on Load File and we can load the saved presets. Right now I have one for presets floor trusses. So I just need to double click here and all the settings will load in. The truss types, engineering, the webbing settings that we have added before. For member sizes, we have two sections available for this floor truss. So they are both here on the list. We are using BMSF SSMA as truss catalog the settings for physical members and engineering. So we have changed the standard loads of these uh, roof joist trusses. We have 10 pound per square feet for top cord live and five for top cord live roof, top cord dead, top cord minimum dead and bottom cord dead and bottom cord minimum dead. The top cord spacing type is Perlin and the spacing is set to eight feet. We are using the AIS I-2016 ASD building code. For the wind load, this is the information and we are using MWF, RS and CNC. And also we have added the snow load here for 30 pound per square feet and okay. Now on the bottom, we have this option for replicate identical. If this item is unselected, unchecked, it means that it is going to generate just this simple envelope. 
But if we check off this option, it will generate all the trusses for the whole roof at once. You can keep this one unchecked and OK. Now, when we are here, if we notice that we have forgotten any of the settings, we can just click on settings. We can go back to the presets and, for example, we want to change the web type. We can just select the second option here and OK. And then when we click on clear web and generate web, it will update our view. We can double click on any of the members that we have here. And here we will have access to the pick list that we have created to the set uh, created in the settings. If we want to use, for example, the second section here for our top chord, we just need to highlight it here and OK. We can do the same thing for all the members of our trust and we can check the sections here. And now if everything is the one that we wanted it to be, we can come here to the engineering drop down. And we can either select to analyze this trust or we can check the options for diagrams. Diagrams also analyze the trust before showing us the diagrams. But the only difference between diagrams and analysis is that we will have access to different diagrams of this trust. Again, for analyzes, it will just check each family with the first member of our pick list. Here in the diagrams, we can select moment, deflection, shear, axial, or CSI. When the envelope option is unchecked, it means that we can check each diagram for each load combination. As you can see, it will change based on the load combination that we are selecting here on the left. But if we want to see all of them at once, we can just check off the option for envelope. You can also check the maximum CSI for this trust. And as you can see, it has passed. We can also check show details, unselecting envelope, selecting the moment diagrams. And here we will have access to all the critical points of this trust. If we double click on any of these critical points on the table on the right, we will see the detailed information of this trust. Now we can close the diagrams and at this point we can just click on reports. We will have three different reports, fabrication, engineering, and detail engineering. You are uh, familiar for, with these reports, so we can skip that part. But now that we have this envelope, the other thing that we can try is that we can come here to file and we can click on export. We need to export the file, so it's going to be demo trust and OK. And now we can switch to Everest. Everest is the standalone version of our trust designer. On the top left, we have an option for create template. We can either click on create template and create our envelope by using these templates or we can just come here to the drop down and click on open and select the trust uh, file that we just exported. So it was a demo trust. When we double click, it will just load it here into Everest. Now, if I click on settings, we will have same dialog box for our presets. We can again save a preset here and load it into Everest, just like uh, we do the same thing in our trust designer. We can check the webbings and the member sizes and our engineering. If I switch to webbing, at this point, we can also check the option for fixed widths. Based on the option that we select for our verticals position, the setting here on the bottom changes. When we select fixed widths, Webbing rules specific settings will change to spacing and minimum chase. We can keep the spacing to three feet or we can also change it to two feet, six inches. And we can also set a minimum chase. So one foot for the minimum chase and we can check off the option for extra verticals. The other option that we can try, we can also change the web type, okay and let's clear web and generate web to see the new settings. 
this is how it looks again like the other settings that we had in Revit we just need to double click on each member just to make sure that the correct family has been assigned to this member now we have the same options on the top to run the diagrams for our trusses it might take a few seconds to start the MWF advanced and it will show us the diagrams for this truss exactly the same dialog box which can check the CSI it passes we can again check the details for this floor joist truss on the right we'll have the table for all the critical points and now we can come here on the top as you can see the analysis uh, are passed and we can generate the reports so again we will have the fabrication drawing with the elevation view of our trust and materials for each member the engineering with all the reaction tables maximum csi summary the deflection table and member forces summary and the detailed engineering with everest because this is a standalone version this is uh, how we can engineer our trusses we don't have the option to generate this truss in our model so if we still want to generate it one thing that we can do we can save as this file and open it again in our truss designer or we can click on OK the settings that we have here and it will get generated in the model at this point because we haven't checked the option for replicate identical the program is asking us to rename this envelope so we can just click on auto rename it would uh, it would automatically rename this envelope and the trust will get generated in the model it might take a few seconds and yes as you can see we will get a yellow shell around the trust which means that this trust has been locked if we want to unlock it we can just go back here to the settings drop down and click on unlock trust we no longer see the yellow shell and now while it is selected we can click on properties and we will switch back to our trust designer dialog box so that was it for our today's webinar Perfect. Thank you, Paranaz. Um, so we just like to open the floor to all of you. Um, if you have a question, please feel free to type into the uh, questions tab of the GoToWebinar dashboard. Um, otherwise, alternative, you can uh, press the raise hand button and we will unmute you. So just while we're waiting uh, for any questions to come through, I'd just like to mention that the recording of the presentation uh, will be sent through tomorrow via email. Um, but if you're looking for it a little earlier, you can usually find it at the end of the day today across our social media channels, uh, primarily LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. All right, we'll just give it a couple of seconds and see if anything has come through. I think um, Louis has oh. a second question. Yes, we do. So I'm just going to go ahead and unmute you, Louis. All right, go ahead. Are you able to connect your audio? Um, so it, I think he's asking, can you design roof rafter system in this software? So roof rafters that we have are uh, available for uh, pro wood or pro suite and we can only run uh, the engineering software for luggage steel so no it uh, we cannot design or analyze rafters with MWF perfect I'm just going to give it another couple of seconds. Uh, we did have another hand raised, but uh, I'm not sure if the audio is connected.
Here you go. The uh, the question just came through uh, the dashboard. Um, Louise would like to know if it's possible to use this trust designer for floors. Yes. Uh, so that is why in the beginning of a webinar, this is for floors. It is we can uh, design or analyze these floor joist trusses. The only thing that we need to do, we can select them and we can click on properties. The only difference between these floor joist trusses and the trusses that we just saw is that at this point, we need to add in the supports manually. And when the supports are added here, we can use the same presets. So we can go back to settings and we can load the preset that we want to have. So presets floor trusses and okay. And now we can run analysis. So we can come here and diagrams. It will be the same set of steps. The only difference is that we need to add this supports manually here by double clicking in the nodes and checking the option for add support. So as you can see, we got the same thing for our uh, diagrams, close. The analysis has passed and we can generate reports for these floor joist trusses as well. Here. Perfect, thank you, Paranaz. Um, I'll just, again, give it another couple of seconds, see if there are any other questions that uh, come through. You're welcome. We do have another question. Um, this is from Cheng. Um, for a wall type truss, if I need to add one more member to the top cord, can it be analyzed? Yes, one of the, so you want to make the top cord, I guess, like a cap member. So in that case, what would, uh, what we would suggest you is that we can come here to settings in member sizes. And instead of using uh, BMSF SSMA S truss or T truss, we can use this catalog for BMSF SSMA cap trusses. When we do so, uh, it will run the engineering with these sections. And when we generate it in our model, these members uh, has been used for them. But um, cap trusses are mainly used for back-to-back -back trusses. We cannot use them for wall trusses. So I don't think we can make the top cord doubled for wall trusses. If I'm not mistaken, we cannot. Do we have a length limit for trusses? Um, so I just switched to the next question that we have here. So uh, we don't have a length limit, but uh, so if uh, the top cord and bottom cord are really long, it means that we need to increase the number of supports and we also need to have a stronger section uh, for our member types. But as long as uh, the analysis pass, uh, we don't have any limits for the length. All right, perfect. Um, again, just going to give it a couple of seconds, see if there's any last minute questions that pop uh, pop in. Uh, sorry, I just need to add something else. In our next public release, we will have an option to partially cap or brace members. So for the question that Cheng asked us for wall type truss, if I need to add one more member to the top cord, I think for wall trusses, uh, bracing or partially bracing would be a better option than cap truss families here. So we can just partially select the critical parts of our trusses and uh, we can 
add a member next to them just to make those uh, member types stronger. Yeah, so partially bracing will be available in our next public release. Perfect. And um, as Perna has mentioned that, re well, that release should be coming out within the next few weeks um, or just early summer. Uh, so we'll keep you updated on that as well. All right, well, that seems like it's a wrap for today. Um, uh, if you'd like to reach out to us or set up a one-on-one -on -one demonstration, um, our contact details will be provided along with the recording tomorrow via email. Um, and if you would like to set up a one-on-one -on -one demonstration, like I mentioned, we'd be happy to get that sorted for you. So just drop us an email quickly. All right, uh, we'll now be ending the webinar. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone and also thank you to Paranas um, for joining us today. All right, have a great day, everyone. Have a great day.